In the arid desert near the Dead Sea, an astonishing discovery was made in 1947 that would shake the foundations of biblical scholarship and confirm the divine inspiration of Scripture. The Dead Sea Scrolls, hidden for centuries in the Qumran Caves, included some of the oldest known copies of biblical texts, dating back over 2,000 years. Among these treasures was the Isaiah Scroll, remarkably preserved and dating to about 200 years before the birth of Jesus. This discovery was more than just an archaeological wonder. It was a divine revelation. The Dead Sea Scrolls contained numerous manuscripts, including complete books of the Old Testament, fragments, and other religious writings of the Jewish community. These texts were virtually identical to the Hebrew Bible used today, affirming the accuracy and preservation of Scripture over millennia. The scrolls covered all the books of the Old Testament except for the Book of Esther. The Isaiah scroll, in particular, offered a direct link to the prophecies about the coming Messiah, written centuries before Jesus walked the earth. Parallel to this, the Septuagint, a Greek translation of the Hebrew Scriptures, was created in the 3rd century BC. This translation was widely used in the Hellenistic Jewish communities, and later by early Christians. The existence of the Septuagint is crucial because it shows that the prophecies and texts were not altered after Jesus' life to fit his narrative. They were established long before his birth. What makes this discovery so profound is the consistency found between the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Septuagint, and the modern Bible. Despite being written by different hands in different eras and in different languages, these texts convey the same divine message, underscoring their divine origin. This remarkable preservation and consistency highlight the meticulous care with which the scriptures were transmitted, guided by the hand of God himself. Key prophecies about the Messiah, like Isaiah 9 verse 6, state, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This prophecy, found in the Septuagint and the Dead Sea Scrolls, speaks of a divine child who will come to rule and bring peace. This verse clearly indicates the dual nature of the Messiah, a child born into humanity who is also divine, bearing titles that belong to God himself. Isaiah 53 verse 3 says, He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised and we held him in low esteem. This passage foretells the suffering servant, a key messianic prophecy. It vividly describes the Messiah's rejection and suffering, which was fulfilled in the life of Jesus, who was despised by many and endured immense suffering. The birth of Jesus' prophecy, Isaiah 7 verse 14, states, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Fulfillment in Matthew 1 verse 22 to 23 says, All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Isaiah's prophecy about a virgin birth was a significant sign to the Jewish people. This prophecy was fulfilled in the birth of Jesus to the Virgin Mary, as recorded in the Gospel of Matthew. The name Emmanuel means God with us signifying that Jesus is God incarnate, dwelling among humanity. The ministry of Jesus' prophecy, Isaiah 35, verse 5 to 6, states, Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lame leap like a deer and the mute tongue shout for joy. Fulfillment in Matthew 11, verse 4 to 5, Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk. Those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Isaiah's prophecy depicted the Messiah performing miraculous healings and bringing restoration. In Matthew, Jesus points to his miracles as evidence that he is the fulfillment of this prophecy. The physical healing symbolized the spiritual healing Jesus brought, affirming his identity as the Messiah. In the arid desert near the Dead Sea, an astonishing discovery was made in 1947 that would shake the foundations of biblical scholarship and confirm the divine inspiration of Scripture. The Dead Sea Scrolls, hidden for centuries in the Qumran Caves, included some of the oldest known copies of biblical texts, 
dating back over 2,000 years. Among these treasures was the Isaiah Scroll, remarkably preserved and dating to about 200 years before the birth of Jesus. This discovery was more than just an archaeological wonder. It was a divine revelation. The Dead Sea Scrolls contained numerous manuscripts, including complete books of the Old Testament, fragments, and other religious writings from the Jewish community. These texts were virtually identical to the Hebrew Bible used today, affirming the accuracy and preservation of Scripture over millennia. The scrolls covered all the books of the Old Testament except for the Book of Esther. The Isaiah scroll, in particular, offered a direct link to the prophecies about the coming Messiah, written centuries before Jesus walked the earth. Parallel to this, the Septuagint, a Greek translation of the Hebrew Scriptures, was created in the 3rd century B.C., this translation was widely used in the Hellenistic Jewish communities and later by early Christians. The existence of the Septuagint is crucial because it shows that the prophecies and texts were not altered after Jesus' life to fit his narrative. They were established long before his birth. What makes this discovery so profound is the consistency found between the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Septuagint, and the modern Bible. Despite being written by different hands in different eras and in different languages, these texts convey the same divine message, underscoring their divine origin. This remarkable preservation and consistency highlight the meticulous care with which the scriptures were transmitted, guided by the hand of God Himself. Key prophecies about the Messiah, like Isaiah 9 verse 6, state, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on His shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This prophecy, found in the Septuagint and the Dead Sea Scrolls, speaks of a divine child who will come to rule and bring peace. This verse clearly indicates the dual nature of the Messiah, a child born into humanity who is also divine, bearing titles that belong to God himself. Isaiah 53 verse 3 says, he was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him in low esteem. This passage foretells the suffering servant, a key messianic prophecy. It vividly describes the Messiah's rejection and suffering, which was fulfilled in the life of Jesus, who was despised by many and endured immense suffering. The birth of Jesus' prophecy, Isaiah 7 verse 14 states, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and will call him Emmanuel. Fulfillment in Matthew 1 verse 22 to 23 says, All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. Which means, God with us. Isaiah's prophecy about a virgin birth was a significant sign to the Jewish people. This prophecy was fulfilled in the birth of Jesus to the Virgin Mary, as recorded in the Gospel of Matthew. The name Emmanuel means God with us, signifying that Jesus is God incarnate, dwelling among humanity. The ministry of Jesus' prophecy, Isaiah 35, verse 5 to 6, states, Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lame leap like a deer and the mute tongue shout for joy. Fulfillment in Matthew 11, verse 4 to 5, Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Isaiah's prophecy depicted the Messiah performing miraculous healings and bringing restoration. In Matthew, Jesus points to his miracles as evidence that he is the fulfillment of this prophecy. The physical healing symbolized the spiritual healing Jesus brought affirming his identity as the Messiah. I am God's wheat, and I shall be ground by the teeth of beasts, that I may become the pure bread of Christ. Letter to the Romans These accounts of martyrdom highlight the apostles and early Christians' unwavering faith and willingness to face death, rather than deny their belief in Jesus Christ. Their willingness to die for their faith serves as a powerful testament to the truth of the resurrection and the divinity of Jesus. People do not willingly face persecution and death for what they know to be a lie. The fact that these individuals chose martyrdom over renouncing their faith strongly supports 
the authenticity of their testimony, and the reality of Jesus' resurrection. The Bible contains numerous passages where Jesus explicitly declares His divinity, affirming His identity as the Son of God. These declarations are foundational to Christian belief, illustrating Jesus' unique relationship with the Father and His role in the salvation of humanity. By examining these key passages, we gain a deeper understanding of Jesus' divine nature and His mission on earth. In Exodus 3 verse 4, God reveals His name to Moses. God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. This declaration of I am signifies God's eternal self-existent nature. Jesus echoes this divine name in John 8 verse 58 when He declares, Very truly I tell you, before Abraham was born, I am. This statement caused an immediate reaction among his Jewish audience, who recognized it as a direct claim to divinity, equating himself with the eternal God of Israel. By using the I am statement, Jesus clearly identifies himself with the God of the Old Testament, affirming his pre-existence and divine nature. In John 10 verse 30, Jesus makes a profound statement about his unity with God the Father. I and the Father are one. This declaration goes beyond mere agreement or alignment. It signifies a deep, intrinsic unity in essence and purpose. This statement led to an immediate attempt by his audience to stone him for blasphemy, as they understood him to be claiming equality with God. In John 14, verse 6, Jesus declares, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This statement highlights Jesus as the exclusive path to God, embodying divine truth and life. By claiming to be the only way to the Father, Jesus asserts His unique and essential role in humanity's redemption and access to eternal life. In John 14 verse 9, Jesus further explains His divine identity to His disciples. Anyone who has seen Me has seen the Father. This statement underscores the perfect representation of God the Father in Jesus. Seeing Jesus is equivalent to seeing God, as He perfectly embodies and reveals the Father's nature and character. Read the passages Colossians 1 verse 15 to 20 and Hebrews 1 verse 3 to get a better understanding of God's divinity. If this message has touched your heart and you feel called to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I invite you to pray with me. Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that you are the Son of God, the Messiah, and my Savior. I believe that you died for my sins and rose again, conquering death and offering eternal life. I repent of my sins and invite you into my heart. Transform my life with your love and grace. I commit to following you and growing in my faith. Thank you for your sacrifice and the gift of salvation. Amen. If you've prayed this prayer, we encourage you to reach out in the comments below. We love to support you in finding a community of believers to grow with. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more content that deepens your faith and understanding of God's Word. Let's continue this journey together, grounded in the truth and love of Jesus Christ. If you enjoyed this content, consider supporting us by clicking the Super Thanks button below. Your support helps us continue sharing the transformative story of Jesus. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching and check out the video on your screen.